This is going to be the only tutorial that you need to start running Facebook ads in 2024. Because if I know one thing, I know that Facebook ads as a beginner can be two things, intimidating and overwhelming. You don't know what you're spending your money on. You're not sure if you're spending enough or spending too much on ads. And you don't know how the hell you're supposed to make money by running these ads. So by the end of this video, my goal is to make sure that you understand each step of setting up your ads, how to read your data, and most importantly, how to successfully start running ads profitably. And I even have a cheat sheet document that's gonna help you run your ads as a beginner that I'll be dropping in the description down below as soon as this video reaches 2000 likes. So make sure you're smashing that like button. And I'll even be giving out a free one-on-one -on -one consulting call to cover everything ads related or just any questions you may be having to one lucky person who in the comment section down below comments the word ads with your biggest takeaway from today's video. Now, with Facebook housing over 3.3 billion users, beginner and advanced advertisers know that this is a great space for advertisers advertising with truly endless potential. But because of that, Facebook has been known to throw out even more restrictions as more and more aspiring advertisers are hopping in. So if restrictions are one of the things that you hear about and scare you away from actually getting started, we're about to go through some best practices when it comes to avoiding those infamous Facebook restrictions so that you can start running your ads as seamless as possible. That starts with having a Facebook page that's been active for six months or more. You absolutely do not want to start advertising on a brand new Facebook profile. Facebook is looking to keep the integrity behind the type of people who can advertise and having an account that has been active for six months or longer helps show that you're a real person. Now, when you have all that, you'll want to make sure the name on your account is identical to the name on any official documents like IDs or passports and that you have a clear photo of your face as your profile picture. This is going to help you get your advertising account back way faster in case any restrictions do end up happening while you're running your ads. Once these precautions are taken, you're going to want to do something that I like calling warming up your account. You want to log into your account and scroll through your newsfeed at least for five to 10 minutes, liking, commenting, and interacting how you normally would at least twice a day for a couple days, further proving that you're a real person through your actions. Now, make sure that you're acting normal while you're doing this. Pause and watch videos, like things that you would normally like, stop to read interesting things. Now you have to understand Facebook's AI is extremely smart and it will pick up on actions that seem out of the ordinary, like liking hundreds of posts in just a couple of minutes. These precautions will help you avoid any bans or restrictions right from the beginning of your journey or help you easily move past them if they still end up happening. So I'm gonna say this again, warming up your account from here on out is always going to be the first step to running Facebook ads. Now, once your account is warmed up, then now you're gonna move on to the more technical side of running Facebook ads, which is actually creating your advertising account and connecting it to your Shopify account. And there's two main parts of your advertising account, and that's gonna be your business manager and your ad account. The business manager, this is a tool that allows you to manage multiple aspects and accounts and keep everything under one space. While the ad account is where you'll actually be running your ads. So in order to create these two important things and connect them to your Shopify account, you'll need to head over here to business.facebook.com. And right here where it says log in with Facebook, this is where you're gonna log in with your warmed up Facebook profile. From here at the bottom, you're gonna go ahead and click on create a business account. You should go ahead and make the business account name the same name as your Shopify store. And go ahead and put your first name, last name, and business email. And then go ahead and click on create. Once it's created, you have now created your business manager. Once that's created, you'll wanna head over to the business settings. Inside the business settings, this will be what the main screen is that you'll see. And now we have to create the ad account. You'll wanna come down over here to ad accounts. Then at the top where it says add, you wanna go ahead and click on add. Then you wanna click on create a new ad account. For ad account name, you can name this whatever you want. Go ahead and make sure it's in your time zone in your currency, then click on next. Then right here where it says this ad account will be used for, you wanna make sure your business that you just created is the one that you go ahead and choose and then go ahead and click on create. Once you have all of that created, you're gonna to wanna to head back over to Shopify, where you'll now be connecting your Shopify account to the business manager and the ad account that you just made. So in order to do that, you're just going to come over here to sales channels, and you wanna type in Facebook and Instagram. Then it'll take you to the Shopify app store and you wanna make sure you go ahead and download it. Once it's downloaded, you'll see this screen right here. All right, so once you make it onto this screen, do not click get started right here. I want you to scroll down, and then right here where it says ads only, go ahead and click on get started. And then now you're gonna go ahead and connect your account. This is gonna be that same Facebook profile that we've been working with this entire time. So go ahead and click on continue. Now here, you wanna go ahead and connect the business manager that you just now created. So go ahead and click on connect. And then right here where it says terms and conditions, go ahead and click on I agree and then submit for review. Once you have that connected, you wanna come back over here to the settings at the top. Now here in the settings, you wanna make sure that it says maximum and that the pixel that is on your ad account is also connected. And then once you get through this entire checklist that Shopify is gonna run you through to complete the connection, 
you're done with the technical stuff for the back end and it's time to get into running some ads. But now that you're gonna be getting some data, I wanna make sure that you know some key data points that you should be looking for, what they mean, and how to see the metrics on your ads manager. And I have this cheat sheet document right here that my team and I created that's gonna break down the most important metrics while running your ads so you can study and understand them. And trust me when I say this, the more that you understand what the numbers mean to your performance, the better success that you'll have. And I'll be dropping this cheat sheet document at 2000 likes, so make sure that if you want it, plus five validated winning products that you can test with these strategies that you're about to learn, make sure to go ahead and smash that like button down below. And understanding your data is going to be key to the success that you'll have with Facebook ads, because every decision that you make should be based off of data that you're being presented with. So let's go through them real quick so that you have a full understanding of why you'll wanna know them, plus what it means when you start to see numbers start to pop up under them. Start off with three of the most important, which is going to determine the quality of your advertisement as well as how well you're bidding against other people who are also advertising in your space is going to be quality ranking, engagement rate ranking, and conversion rate ranking. Quality ranking measures the quality of your ad in comparison to the others competing for the same audience. Engagement rate ranking measures the expected level of engagement your ad will be getting compared to other people who are running a similar ad. And your conversion rate ranking is pretty self-explanatory how well your ad is converting against other people who are selling something very similar. Three other important ones is impressions, reach, and frequency. So reach is the number of people who saw your ads at least once once, while impressions is just the number of times your ads have been seen in general. While frequency brings those both together, which is the number of times one person has seen the same ad multiple times. So if your frequency is way too high, you know that the same people are seeing the same ad over and over again. And the most important one out of all of these is ROAS, which stands for return on advertising spend. This is a very similar term to something you probably have heard before, which is ROI, return on investment. The only thing different is you're seeing how profitable you are just by your ads alone. Next, we have clicks all and link clicks. Clicks all occurs when somebody clicks on any part of your ad. Link clicks occur when somebody clicks and visits your website, which brings me to the next metrics, which is cost per click and cost per link click. How much is costing for somebody to click on your ad versus how much is costing for somebody to click to visit your website? Next, we have cost per 1,000 impressions. This is the average price a marketer would pay to get 1,000 impressions. So with cost per click, cost per link click, and CPM, the lower these are, the better. Next, we have click-through rate and click-through rate link click, which is the percentage of people who saw your ad and clicked and watched it and the percentage of people who saw your ad and clicked and visited your website. The higher these are, the better. Now, I know that was a lot of information that we just covered, but I wanna remind you that this is exactly what we help our students learn and implement on every single day so that they're able to generate results like this and like this time and time again. It will take some practice and time to fully understand running ads, but if you're looking to streamline the process with myself and my team by your side, make sure you go ahead and click on the link down in my description and apply for the limited spots available in my personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching program. And now that you have an idea of what the variables mean, let's go ahead and make sure that your columns are set up correctly on your ad account so you can effectively see all of your data that you need. And making sure that the columns are set up and that you are tracking the right things while running Facebook ads is going to continue to help you learn your data better. So to set up your columns, you're gonna head back into your ads manager. You're gonna go ahead and click on these three lines where it says performance, and you're gonna come down over here and click on customize columns. And then just go ahead and clear all of this out. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and set up is our front end metrics. And the front end metrics are gonna measure anything that's happening before the customer makes it to the website. So let's go ahead and get into the setup of that first. So the first four ones I have is campaign, delivery, ad set name, and last significant edit. This is how all of yours should start as well. Now we wanna come over here and type in 95, put in videos plays at 95%, showcasing how many times people are watching your video 95% through. Now we wanna go ahead and do average video play time. After that, we wanna go ahead and do reach, frequency and impressions. Now we wanna do the three rankings. So quality ranking, engagement ranking, and conversion rate ranking. Now we wanna go ahead and do cost per click, cost per link click, click through rate, click through rate link click, CPMs, and lastly, clicks all. Now go ahead and take a screenshot of this if you have not. This is all the things that are happening on the front end. Now it's time to head into the back end. And the back end is measuring anything that's happening once the customer makes it to your website. So this is gonna start off with link clicks. Then we wanna go over here to add to cart and we wanna do cost and then total. And then we wanna go ahead and check these off. Then we wanna go ahead and do checkouts initiated and we wanna do cost and total. Go ahead and uncheck those as well. Then we wanna go ahead and do purchase and we only wanna do total first and then go ahead and uncheck those. Now we're gonna go ahead and do amount spent, budget, type in purchase again, 
Now we want to do cost for purchase. Then we want to do the value of the purchase, which is going to tell us the amount that people are spending while purchasing. And lastly, ROAS. And you want to go ahead and uncheck that as well. Once you have all of these columns set up, you want to scroll down to the bottom where it says save as preset and then go ahead and name it. Once you're finished with that, go ahead and click on apply. And now that the columns are set up and you have an idea of what the metrics mean, you're one step closer to running your ads. But when it comes down to it, you cannot run ads without making sure you have an idea of how to come up with the actual ads that you're going to be running. Now look, I'm about to give you a tested and proven ad strategy that has helped myself and my students generate some life-changing results. But all of that was done by making sure that there were some strong ads being used. You should always have an idea of what's already working on the market ad-wise for the product that you're using. And Facebook Ads Library is one of them. So if we head over here to Facebook Ad Library and search for a backstretcher, you can see that we're able to see all the different ads that are being pushed on Facebook currently for that product. From there, you're able to click into these stores and use a free Google Chrome extension called Similar Web in order to make sure that the store is getting traffic today. Now, obviously we wanna see how the store is getting traffic as that's gonna tell us that consumers were intrigued by the ad that was being used in the market that actually got them to go to the store in the first place. With that information, you're then able to create a pro and cons list of the ads that are currently being used on the market to then send it to your video editor so you can come up with even stronger ads. And while making your pros and cons list, there's going to be five things that you're gonna be looking for in order to create a really engaging, high converting and traffic driving app. Start off with number one, the first three seconds have to catch your attention. Attention spans have decreased with the increase of short form content. So you have to make sure that the first three seconds have some sort of wow factor that's going to keep your customer engaged. Second, the ad has a compelling copy on it. Consumers have to have the ability to see and read what the product can do for them in order to have it correlate in their head that they might be interested in the product, which means that you need to make sure that each feature and benefit that is shown in the ad is also being written in the copy, which will help you drive more consistent traffic. Third, the ad needs to have high quality visuals. Believe me when I say that low quality content is not gonna get you very far. You want to make sure that your viewers can clearly see the product and everything it has to offer. Next, the ad needs to have a strong call to action. This is very important. Viewers have to be told where to go, otherwise they will just keep scrolling. If you give them a strong call to action, you're enticing them to come see what you have to offer. And fifth and lastly, the product should have some sort of storyline available. Storytelling is something that helps pull the attention of the consumer and makes them want to watch the entire ad itself and help create the viral aspect which can help keep eyes on your ads and consumers coming to your store. With these things in mind, that's where you're able to watch the videos of your competitors selling this product and then just build out a pro and cons list, which is as simple as this old one that I just made right here. Letting my editors know exactly what I like and what I don't like while keeping those five main aspects that we just talked about in mind while creating it. From there, your editor, especially if they have experience in the e-commerce space, should be able to create some really strong ads for you to test with. And if you don't have access to an editor quite yet, you can check out the ones that I use in the link down in my description. They're called Dropship Media and that link is gonna give you $10 off every order that you have with them. And if you do order with them, the turnaround time is just around 48 hours. So once you do get them back, it's the moment that you've been waiting for, running ads. Now, content is king when it comes to dropshipping. So when you get your ads back, you're gonna have three different videos to test and you're gonna want about three different thumbnails to test as well. Now, they're gonna only make you one thumbnail, but the others you're able to get from the ads that are already working on the market, as long as there's no watermark or branding on it. Put it this way, the more pieces of content that you have to test, the more you're gonna understand what works and what does not work for people who are interested in your product. And this is where you're gonna have an advantage over everybody else out there in the market. But with that being said, I at least always suggest starting off with three videos and three thumbnails to test out on what I call a creative testing campaign. This is where you're able to actually test the different ads that you have against each other at a pretty low cost in order to see which one is gonna give you the best result on the market. Creative testing is mandatory in my books because it's gonna help you avoid spending money unnecessarily on ads that won't work for you in the long run. I'm not the advertiser who believes in spinning, 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 and spinning until something finally hopefully works. Everything that we do on this side, it's based on data. So let me go ahead and show you how to set up your creative testing campaign. So to do this on the ad account, you're just gonna come over here and click on create. You're gonna come down over here to sales and then click on continue and then go ahead and do manual sales campaign and then click continue again. And we're gonna go ahead and name this creative testing campaign. That's the only thing we're gonna do on the campaign level. 
And now we're gonna come over here to the ad set level. We're gonna name this video one, thumbnail one. Where for this ad set, we're gonna be testing the first video with the first thumbnail that we have. So where it says conversion, you wanna make sure it says website. Come down over here, go ahead and click on your pixel. Conversion event, you wanna make sure you always do purchase. Where it says daily budget, you're gonna go ahead and put it at $20. Are you gonna spend the full $20? No, you're not, but you gotta be patient. We're gonna go ahead and set this up at the following night at midnight so we don't have any skewed data at all. For locations, we're gonna go ahead and do the top five countries, United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Now we're gonna go ahead and click on show more options. Where it says minimum age, we wanna go ahead and do 21. For languages, we wanna go ahead and do English because we only want people who can read our ads. And then where it says advantage audience, you're not gonna put anything in this section. Where it says placements, you're not going to change anything in this section either so now we're going to come to the ad level and we're going to name this ad the same that we just named the ad set we're going to make sure that we go ahead and put our facebook page in then you want to go ahead and click on manual upload where it says format you want to go ahead and do single image or video now where it says ad creative you want to go ahead and click on ad media add video and this is where you're going to go ahead and upload the first video that you just got back for your primary text headline and description i would focus and take at least 95 percent of what is already working in the market for someone else i am no copywriter i assume a lot of you guys watching are not copywriters so do not try to reinvent the wheel and honestly the easiest way to go ahead and do this is just take their full ad copy they already have head to chat gpt and just say something like this rewrite my competitor's ad copy into my own words and just paste it once you have that go ahead and copy it come back over here to your ads manager and paste it now you want to do the same thing with the headline and description so come over here and click on edit media edit video thumbnail manual and then click on upload and here's where you're gonna go ahead and upload your professional thumbnail that you have. Now, after that, you wanna go ahead and enter your website URL. This is not going to be the home page of your website. This is going to be the product page of the product that you're selling. And then there's one more majorly important thing that you have to do. As you might already know, a major part of running ads is tracking data and making decisions based off of what your data is telling you. Now, because there's been some major privacy changes on the Facebook side, it's made it a little harder to obtain all the data that you'll be receiving. To make sure that you're getting the most that you can in order to effectively run your ads, you're gonna wanna set up something called UTM parameters. By setting your UTM parameters up while you're creating your ads, you're giving yourself the opportunity to track the exact path that any shopper takes from your ads all the way through from your landing page without being blocked by privacy restrictions. And you might not know it yet, but having this data is gonna give you clearer insights to how many purchases you have, and in general, how well your ads are really performing. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure to add those in. So to do that, right here at the bottom, you wanna go ahead and click on build a URL parameter. And you wanna go ahead and start off with campaign medium and go ahead and put ad name. For campaign name, you wanna go ahead and do campaign name. And for campaign content, you wanna do ad set name. Once you're done with that, you wanna go ahead and click on apply. And now that you have these UTMs set up, you will actually be able to see the data on the Shopify side. All right, very simple. We got that all set up. And now that you have your UTM parameters set up, the data that you'll be receiving while running your ads will be tracked way more efficient than if it was not set up. So now you have video one, thumbnail one, completely finished. But we are not done yet because we wanna test out three variations of the three different ads that we have. So the first thing I wanna go ahead and do is click on these three dots and click on duplicate and I wanna go ahead and do two copies. And you also wanna make sure that you rename these as well. So now you see I have video one, thumbnail one, video one, thumbnail two, and video one, thumbnail three. Now the only thing I have to do here is just now change the thumbnail of these two other variations nothing else so do not change the video do not change the ad copy do not change anything else so simply just come over here and click on edit media edit video again thumbnail and then choose your second and third thumbnail and just like that i'm finished now with video one but again we have video two and video three so let's go ahead and get that set up as well so i'm gonna go ahead and duplicate off of it again and we're gonna do the same for video two now here you're not changing the thumbnails the ad copy nothing you're just changing the video itself so we'll come back over here we'll do edit media we'll do change video and we'll choose our second variation of our video and remember you want to put everything else back the same and then you just want to go ahead and duplicate it one more time and then right here you're just going to go ahead and enter your third video and once you're all finished it should look exactly like this video three thumbnail one to thumbnail three video two thumbnail one to thumbnail three and video one thumbnail one to thumbnail three so you should have nine different variations out there and once you're done you're going to go ahead and click on publish and just like that you have your creative testing campaign set up. Now, remember I told you earlier, you're not gonna spend the full $20 on each one of these ad sets. It's just there to build up data quicker. What you're going to do is if you have a product under $50, you're gonna let this run to right around five to $7 each. And if your product is over $50, you're gonna let it run to right around seven to $10 each. And then once that happens, you're going to have the data that you need in order to know which ad is gonna perform the best for you on the market. I'm gonna go ahead and pull up one of my old creative tests so that you can see a live example of what you should be looking for and how to choose the winner 
winner out of the ads that you tested. So as you can see right here, I was testing out six different videos. And the first thing I'm doing to measure the performance of my creative testing is looking at the backend metrics. So I'm looking at anything that's either got an add to cart or purchase. And with the product being under $50, I am looking for an add to cart by at least that five to $7 mark. So we know this one didn't even get an add to cart, so we're not even gonna go ahead and consider that one. We see this one right here didn't even get a purchase, so we're not gonna consider that one either. So now we're down to three, four, five, and six. So when I look between all four of these ones, I'm only looking really at ad group three and ad group five, because again, you can see that these ones are right around five to $7 or less. So that knocks out everything on the back end. Now we have to validate on the front end. So what I like doing is I like just clearing out the rest of them. And a lot of people would probably say go with ad group video five because you see it has a dollar 25 added cart which is really great but it only got one purchase compared to this one having two purchases and for this test i wanted my cost per click to be under a dollar i wanted my cost per link click to be under a dollar 30 cents and i wanted my click through rate to be greater than two and a half percent so because of that the winner in this example was ad group video three and now that we've chosen your winner because of the way that we set up our creative test you're able to take that straight into the next campaign, which is a cold audience campaign to start maximizing on what's already working for you within the creative test. And one thing I do wanna say before we move on to this campaign is that if you do get purchases in the creative testing campaign, just let it keep running. You're not gonna hurt yourself by getting more purchases from something that's already working for you. So heading into a cold audience campaign, it's got this name because this is where you're actually going to be testing cold interest. And because you don't know what interests are gonna work for you yet, they're new or cold to you and you're cold to them. This is the first time that you've tapped into these audiences and you're looking to find which interests will work for you so that you can continue to build on them. And as you test within these different interests, you're going to see that some react to your ads and do really well and do what you want them to do while other interests just don't hit at all. So from there, you stop spending money on the ads that are not working for you and continue to test different interests until you have an entire campaign filled with interests that are consistently making you sales daily. Now, I know I just explained this cold interest concept at a pretty high level, but do not get too overwhelmed. I'm about to show you step-by-step step on how to do everything I just explained. So because video three was our winner, that's what we're gonna go ahead and use in our interest testing campaign. So to set this up, we're gonna go ahead and click on create sales, continue, manual sales campaign again click on continue you want to name this cold interest testing campaign and right here where it says advantage campaign budget you want to go ahead and turn this on and this is what's going to turn on what is considered a cbo and cbo is going to stand for campaign budget optimization where you're putting the budget on the campaign level instead of on the specific ad set level and allowing it to spread across your best performing winners and this chart right here shows you exactly what I'm saying. So before in our creative testing campaign, you see we're setting each one at $20 each. But now we're gonna put that same budget at the campaign level and let it spread across the ad sets and put more money into what is working and less into what is not. Getting that more bang for our buck. You start with a $50 a day budget or a $100 a day budget, that depends on you. I typically start off with a $100 a day budget. And when I use the $100 budget, I test out 10 different interests. So if you're gonna do the 50, you have to do five. So for this example, we're gonna go ahead and just do 50 because it'll be a little bit quicker. So here we are on the ad set level. We don't know what to name it yet because we don't know what interest we're gonna test. Conversion event, we're going to go ahead and do purchase. For start date, again, we wanna do midnight the next day. Where it says show more options and asset spending limits, you wanna go ahead and set this at $5 daily minimum. So what this is saying is that Facebook, no matter what on this asset, you have to spend minimum $5. And like I just told you earlier, you're spending $50 on this campaign with five ad sets with a $5 minimum spend. So five ad sets times five is $25. And your campaign is $50. So the other $25 is going to be spread across your best performing ad sets. But this is how you can maintain your budget without it just spinning all over the place. Next, you wanna go ahead and put your top five countries in again. Now, right here where it says advantage plus audience, you can keep this on if you want, where you can just let Facebook go ahead and do the work for you and find you some of the best interests. I like personally testing out the ones that I want to myself. So instead I click on switch switch to original audience options. So now I'm gonna go ahead and see this screen right here. And again, you wanna go ahead and do 21 through 65 plus, genders, you wanna go ahead and do all. And then right here is where you're gonna go ahead and find your first interest. And there is no right or wrong answer here. Just whatever you think would make sense with what you're testing, just try it out but don't do something that just does not make sense at all. So we're sticking with that back stretcher example for earlier, I might test something out like health and wellness. Now, what you wanna go ahead and see is you wanna have an audience size of 5 million or greater. And to be real with you, the sweet spot is 50 million or greater so you can have a big audience size 
and give yourself a great opportunity of scalability. So I went ahead and did health and wellness for this first interest. Once I go ahead and name this, I wanna go ahead and copy it. I wanna scroll back up to the top and I wanna go ahead and name it. So now I know that this is my specific ad set that's going towards this specific interest. For languages, you wanna make sure you go ahead and do English and then just go ahead and keep this the way that it is. And then here on the ad level, this is where you're gonna go ahead and input your winning ad. And what I would do is where it says ad setup, I would go ahead and click on use existing post and then click select post and then select the ad that just worked the best for you. And it's as simple as that. But remember we're testing five interests, so I'm gonna go ahead and test out four more. So I'm gonna come over here and click on these three dots click on duplicate, number of copies, and do four. And then from here, you're just simply just choosing different interest. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out real quick. And when you're finished, it should look just like this, where you have five ad sets with one interest inside each one of them, all going towards your specific winning creative that you just found in your creative testing campaign. Now, if you stayed with me through that, you're doing it and your ads will be up and running tomorrow. But you might be thinking, well, okay, I got my ads set up, but now what? So the first thing that you need to do is let your budget spend. It's gonna take a little money in order to get your ads warmed up, customers will be able to see it and potential purchases to start coming in. But if an ad set or interest does not get at least an added cart by the first 24 hours of running, you should just turn that ad set off. We are not in the business of spending money on ads that are not working. And then everything else should continue to spend the budget over at least three to five days while cutting ad sets that are showing unprofitable return on ad spends. Now, if everything is unprofitable, it's in your best interest that after those three to five days, you should cut your loss and move on to another product. Understanding that every single product will not work for you, it's a part of the business. But like some products won't work for you, there's gonna be some that do. And those are the ones that we focus on growing. And this right here is the key performance indicator sheet that I give out to each one of my students, which helps gives a key indicator when it comes to whether your product is profitable or not profitable and how much you're willing to spend in order to get that next purchase. And as you can see, I'm able to plug in exactly what my product cost was with shipping, along with what I'm selling it for and any fees that are coming with selling the product. And once I plug those numbers in, it's gonna give you a breakdown of literally everything that you can need in order to make sure that your ads are performing how you need them to. From your break-even cost for purchase, your break-even added car, what you're willing to spend on your second, third, fourth purchase, and so on and so forth, this is going to keep you profitable at all times. And this is key information to have while running ads because this is what helps you stay away from what I like to call emotional spending. It's just way too easy to want to hold on to interests that you think are doing good for you or have the potential to do so. We're not moving on potential, we're moving on data. So if that data is coming back how you need it to and you're getting purchases on interest with a positive ROAS, as soon as it hits about that fourth day running, you're gonna start the process of horizontal and vertical scaling. So once you start to see an ad set that has an interest that is getting you results like this, where you can see it has multiple purchases and a very positive ROAS, that's where we're first gonna hit that horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling is what allows you to spread more money across an interest that is working for you in order to help you find more interest that can bring you in even more money. On the other hand, vertical scaling is where you take an interest that is proven to work with multiple sales and a positive ROAS and push more money into that interest to help bring in even more money. Let me show you slash tell you what I mean. If you have an asset that has an interest that has five or more purchases with a positive ROAS, then what I do is I simply just duplicate it five times in the same CBO cold audience. So just like this one right here, I'll click on duplicate and I'm not gonna do new campaign, I'm gonna do the original campaign. And then right here where it says number of copies, I would do five and then click on duplicate with updates. Then once I duplicate it, I'm then gonna use the suggestions that Facebook has for interests that are similar to this main interest that has already done well for me. So to do this, I'll just scroll down. So then right here where you see suggestions, I'll go in and click on it. And then I'm going to take from the very top down. So maybe I'll do cosmetics and then I'm gonna take beauty out and then simply just rename it. Then I'm gonna go to the next interest. I'm gonna go to suggestions and I'm gonna go to the second one down and so on and so forth. And I just wanna reiterate that absolutely nothing is changing on this when it comes to the budget or how they're set up. The only thing that is changing is the interest. The entire point of horizontal scaling is to help you find more and more interest that give you the purchases and positive ROAS that you need so you can continue to keep building up your arsenal of winning interests and keep scaling over and over again. 
And the same rules that we just talked about earlier are going to apply to these new interests when it comes to cutting them if they are not profitable while inside of the CBO campaign. Now, a lot of the time, if you're ready to horizontally scale, you're also ready to start some vertical scaling and really start to bring some money in. So like I said, on this campaign, you can see it got seven purchases, a 2.46 ROAS, and I was doing really well with it. So not only did I horizontally scale that one to find more interests that I could test out with, but since it was the fourth day of running and it was profitable, I duplicated the interest five or 10 times into its own ABO campaign, starting the budget at $20. So when it was done, it looked exactly like this. I had that same interest beauty five times, nothing is changing about the interest and the only thing that was changing was the budget itself so i had five of them at twenty dollars and then because this was doing well for me i then duplicated it five to ten times more at a fifty dollar budget and then at a hundred and then 250 500 a thousand and so on and so forth to continue to keep building up data faster and let me be clear you're not going to duplicate from this twenty dollars to fifty dollars if you do not have any profitable ad sets at this budget so you have to understand can this interest even withstand these budgets at all and as you can see this one was i was able to spend 263 dollars and bring close to 750 dollars back in return but not every one of these ad sets work for me but the ones that did, I just kept duplicating off of that. Now, while all of these different interests and campaigns are running, it's imperative that you keep an eye on your KPIs, along with what is being spent to make sure that you're remaining profitable. At the same rate that you'll be spending money on these ads, you should be making money and data back. And with that money and data that you're obtaining, as long as you're remaining profitable, you should be able to hop into what is next, lookalike audiences. And the lookalike audiences is gonna allow you to reach even more audiences of people who based off of Facebook's AI system, acts like the customers who are already buying from you. Now look, this is where you're really gonna start to see some things amp up in your advertising journey because you're no longer guessing who wants your product. You have the data and you know exactly who wants to buy your product. Now in order to start creating those lookalike audiences, you first wanna verify that you have about 5,000 video views which if you're scaling how I just showed you, at this point you should, which is going to allow you to create your first audience, which is a 95% and 75% video view stacked audience, which is exactly what it sounds like. Consumers who watch your ads either 95 or 75% all the way through. Then it will be your website visitors, add to cart, initiate checkout, purchase, and so on and so forth. Let me go ahead and show you how to set this up real quick. So to do that, you're gonna hover over here on the left side and you're gonna go ahead and click on audiences. And then you're gonna go ahead and click on create audience, custom audience, click on video and then click on next. For content type, you wanna go ahead and click on 95% and 75%. You wanna make sure that these are stacked on top of each other. You wanna go ahead and click on choose videos. And again, if you do not have over 5,000 of these right here, do not click on it. But since it does, we're gonna go ahead and click on it and then click on confirm. You wanna come back over here to 75% and you need to choose the exact same video and then click on confirm again. We wanna go ahead and make this 180 days and we're gonna go ahead and name this 9575 custom audience and then go ahead and click on create audience once it's done it will say something like this your custom audience was created and then click on done now that created your custom audience which basically put all the people who took that action all in a pool together and now we want to find lookalikes of those people so to do that we're going to go ahead and click on the audience click on these three dots and then click create a lookalike we want to go ahead and select our pixel for countries you want to go ahead and start off with united states and then right here we want to go ahead and click on the six so it's going to give us zero to one one to two two to three, three to four, four to five, and five to six. Now you do wanna go ahead and do one through 10. So you wanna make sure you do every single one of them, but you can actually only do max of six at once. So that's what you have to go ahead and start off with. Once you're done with that, you'll see it will show up as 2.7 million people. And you're gonna go ahead and click on create audience. And again, you wanna make sure you go back, click the three dots again, and do the audiences six through 10. And just like every other campaign that we set up throughout this video, the same rules apply to your lookalike campaigns. So you should be cutting just as aggressively when these start running as well. Now I know that we've gone through a lot of steps and it's okay to just focus on the parts that we've already covered. Get those steps down and just come back. But for those of you looking for a little bit more advanced strategies to try to keep bringing in that money, we're gonna get into something called retargeting. Now, oftentimes your lookalikes and retargeting are going to happen simultaneously, but retargeting is where things really start to move because you're gonna use all of that data that you've been building up and you're gonna be basically sweeping up all the customers you might have missed the first round. This means that you're about to put yourself in front of anyone who's shown interest in your ads again, but did not purchase from you. So if they clicked on them, watched them, commented, shared, liked, or even came to your store, added a car and checked out, but did not purchase, we are going to go ahead and bring them right back. Because with retargeting, you're going in for a second chance. 
and a lot of the time you'll get what you're looking for now there's two directions that you have when it comes to retargeting and that is warm retargeting and hot retargeting warm retargeting is every single action that was not taken on your store this means that either they've watched your video they went to your facebook page your instagram page but they never actually clicked the shop now button this is a direct reflection of Facebook engagement, 95 slash 75% video view and Instagram engagement. So these are custom audiences that you're able to make for your warm retargeting. Now, the same exact thing goes for your hot retargeting. Hot retargeting is everybody who took action on your store but did not purchase. So that would be your website visitors, people who added a cart, but did not purchase. So as you can see right here is my warm retargeting and my hot retargeting in two separate campaigns. When I click into the warm retargeting, you will notice that I have the 75%, the 95%, the Facebook engagement, all of these stacked on top of each other, excluding anybody who's purchased. And when we head out of here and I go into my hot retargeting, you'll notice I have my website visitors, add to cart, initiate checkout, all of these custom audiences within the last couple of days, excluding people who have purchased. Now throughout your retargeting campaigns, that's where you wanna give out your special deals to help incentivize these customers to get over the finish line. Hey, and pro tip, your retargeting campaigns are a great place to test out new advertisements. This is where you wanna be testing out testimonial style videos, which is going to help persuade the customers to come back in. No one can resist a product that is clearly showing that it's making someone else's life easier or better somehow. It's human nature to wanna to buy it yourself and see it for yourself as well. So for warm retargeting, you might wanna bring them in by giving them an extra 10% off in the ads that you're pushing out to the people who fall in this audience. While for the hot retargeting, you might wanna offer 15 to 20% off with free shipping in the ads that you're pushing out to the people who fall in that audience. Just think about it like this. The closer they were to purchasing, the more you wanna bring them back. Now, when you get to this point in running ads, you've succeeded and you know what there is to know. From here, it's all about your ability to continue to duplicate the process with your current campaigns and of course, with new ones. Running Facebook ads is truly all a system. And once you understand and implement that system on product after product, there's absolutely nothing out there that can stop you from reaching new heights with your online business. You officially have the same systems and strategies that have helped so many of my students absolutely change their lives in your back pocket. Now it's up to you to rewatch, comprehend, and implement. It's your turn to change your life. And I'd love to see and be a part of your journey. Check out the link down in my description for my free success discord group. Join it and let me know when you're in here from this video so that when you start posting your results, I know that this video helped you get there. I can't wait to see what you accomplish. I'll see you all next week. This is AC with Supreme Ecom and I'm out. They gon' want a piece when you got it like that. Like Jake said, we gon' spend it, get it right back. Stack that internet money to the site crash. They on IG, try to get a like.